Starting the third term, Kyotaro is back, but with a broken arm from an unfortunate accident. This makes even simple tasks at school tough for him. Yamada, seeing him struggle, steps in to offer her help, ready to assist with anything he needs, from taking notes to carrying his stuff. During a break, the teacher suggests Kyotaro should get some help from a friend. When the teacher mentions Yamada, Kyotaro, feeling a bit embarrassed, quickly says they're not that close, insisting he can manage on his own. But, oops, Yamada hears everything. She's hurt by his words and starts keeping her distance. With his broken arm, keeping up with class notes becomes a real challenge for Kyotaro. Since Yamada is avoiding him, he can't get notes from her directly. But then, he gets help from Adachi, who says Yamada asked him to pitch in. Kyotaro feels a mix of relief and jealousy. Glad for the help, but wishing it had come directly from Yamada. Eventually, Kyotaro finds the courage to apologize to Yamada. He explains he didn't want to burden her with his problems, but she reassures him she's more than happy to help. They clear the air, and Kyotaro gratefully accepts Yamada's support going forward. Yamada's been Kyotaro's sidekick for three weeks, helping him with all the school stuff, kind of like his personal assistant in a mobile game. Then, Kyotaro's world flips when he spots Yamada in an idol magazine. It's like discovering your quiet classmate is actually a famous Twitch streamer. After school, Yamada doesn't wait for Kyotaro to ask. She drags him to a convenience store and accidentally shows him the magazine, like dropping a casual flex about her latest high score. Kyotaro's a bit unsure at first, but ends up cheering her on, saying as long as she's having fun, it's cool. In the library, Yamada tries to turn pages for Kyotaro but ends up snoozing. She wakes up feeling guilty, like she's failed her mission. Kyotaro tries to lighten the mood with some family pics, but accidentally spells that his injury was because of a photo quest Yamada sent him on. Yamada's hit with a wave of guilt. Next day disaster strikes. Yamada loses her treasured doggy keychain. The search turns into a mini-crisis, with everyone on the lookout. Kyotaro turns detective, retracing Yamada's usual route home, like he's tracking down a rare Pokemon that escaped. Kyotaro finds a teary Yamada, just as he discovers the keychain on a tree branch. A moment as miraculous as finding your lost phone in silent mode. With the snow turning into a mini blizzard, Yamada invites Kyotaro over to warm up, a gesture as welcoming as getting an invite to an exclusive Discord server. Kyotaro is at Yamada's house for the first time, and she's getting a bath ready for him. Kyotaro feels super nervous about taking a shower there. It's like he's on a secret mission in an unfamiliar base. Yamada thinks of everything and leaves fresh clothes for Kyotaro, but he finds out she accidentally packed his underwear too. Now he has to wear her gym clothes, minus the underwear. Feeling a bit awkward without his underwear, Kyotaro meets Yamada's dog, Wantaro. The playful dog tugs at his pants and Kyotaro almost loses them but falls into Yamada instead. It's like a scene from a funny movie where everything goes wrong in the silliest way. Once he's all dressed, they share a hot pot meal. Yamada says she often eats hot pot alone because her parents work late. She wonders if Kyotaro would like to join her for hot pot more often. Then, they have fun looking through Yamada's old yearbook. Spotting a piano in the living room, Kyotaro's curious if Yamada plays. She shares that she tried many activities as a kid, but didn't stick with them, because she didn't feel good at anything. She's worried about letting down the amazing people around her. Kyotaro gives her a comforting hug, telling her it's okay to have those worries, especially as they're growing up. Yamada gets a text from her mom saying she's on her way home. Kyotaro, worried about making a bad first impression in Yamada's gym clothes, gets hidden in her room. Yamada tells her mom that her friend Chihiro is visiting, not him. From the room, Kyotaro listens and thinks Yamada's mom sounds fun and kind, just like Yamada. Yamada tells him her dad is almost home too and describes him as quiet, similar to Kyotaro. Suddenly, her mom checks in on Chihiro, worried the hot pot might cause allergies, but Yamada cleverly covers it up, saying she ate most of it herself. An awkward moment happens when Yamada falls on Kyotaro, making him super embarrassed. He manages to sneak out but then runs into Yamada's dad who gives him a curious look for wearing Yamada's gym outfit. Kyotaro dashes home, cleans the clothes and plans to return them at school the next day. Kyotaro's arm cast is finally off, but he notices his voice sounds strange, making him keep his distance from Yamada. In judo class, Yamada realizes her uniform smells bad and tries to avoid sparring. Kyotaro steps up to spar with her, not minding the smell. Kyotaro figures out his voice sounds odd because he's going through puberty. In the library, he shares this discovery with Yamada, who thinks it's cool he's growing up. She teasingly suggests he should use his deepening voice to call her name more often. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, 
and the buzz is all about making and sharing chocolates. The girls have even roped Kyotaro into joining them at Yamada's place for a chocolate making session. Kyotaro thinks there's been some mix-up, but Moiko is all, nope, you're coming, and practically drags him there. At Yamada's, her mom raises an eyebrow, wondering why there's a boy in the mix. Moiko jumps in with, oh, he's my boyfriend, saving the moment, but cranking up the awkward meter. Yamada, wanting to ditch the awkwardness, pulls her mom aside, leaving Kyotaro feeling like a fish out of water. The conversation turns to Yamada's favorite foods, but Chihiro takes a left turn, declaring her love for Yamada instead of her cooking. With Kyotaro still playing the part of Moko's boyfriend, Yamada's getting more than a little jealous. Kyotaro uses the excuse of needing a bathroom break to escape and rethink his life choices. Thinking about making a run for it, Kyotaro's inner Chad convinces him to stay and set things straight with Yamada's mom if he ever wants to have a shot with Yamada. Gathering his courage, he comes clean about the whole boyfriend act. Surprisingly, this honesty breaks the ice, and Yamada insists he sticks around. Everyone's on edge when Yamada's dad shows up because he's tall, and his stare could freeze lava. Kyotaro has a flashback to a less than pleasant elevator encounter with him. But then, plot twist. Yamada's dad just wants to know if Kyotaro likes video games. Suddenly, they're all gaming together, turning what looked like a showdown into a family game night. Maiko is totally mesmerized when she sees her dad tie his hair up, looking at him like he's a rock star. After they finish making chocolates, Yamada sneakily takes Kyotaro aside to share a chocolate together. She then confesses this was her main reason for inviting him over. While walking home with Moiko and Serena, Serena gets curious about Kyotaro's familiarity with Yamada's house. Caught in the spotlight, Kyotaro spills the beans about his previous visits. At home, Kyotaro's sister teases him about getting chocolates from all the girls, suggesting he's starting his own fan club. Dodging the harem joke, Kyotaro rushes to his room to take a call from Yamada. On the phone, Yamada's curious about what Kyotaro thinks of her parents. He assures her they're cool, especially after bonding over video games. Yamada laughs, mentioning her dad mistakenly called him by her name because of the gym clothes mix-up. It's like being mistaken for a celebrity, but you're just wearing their merch. Chatting with his sister over drinks, she probes about when he'll officially ask Yamada out. The question catches him off guard, causing a spit take. Kyotaro admits he's seriously into Yamada, turning the sibling banter into an awkward silence. Valentine's Day is here, and Yamada is surprisingly collecting chocolates from girls in different classes as she strolls through the corridors. Meanwhile, Kyotaro isn't looking forward to the day, expecting to end up with nothing. As usual, Moiko is busy handing out chocolates to everyone in class. Yamada decides to eat Kyotaro's chocolate, joking that she's a boy for the day. Adachi spots a heart-shaped nut in his chocolate and jumps to conclusions about Moiko's feelings not realizing she's just sharing chocolates with everyone, without any special interest. In the library, Yamada and Kyotaro turn their chocolate stash into shogi pieces for a game. Kyotaro wins easily, and Yamada, possibly dropping a hint, hands over all her chocolates to him as a victory prize. After school, Yamada and Kyotaro catch Hara giving Kenta chocolates. Yamada's hints of jealousy make things a bit awkward. She then asks Kyotaro for a lift home on his bike, reminiscing about their first ride together. Stopping at a convenience store, Yamada wonders out loud to Kyotaro if receiving chocolates could mean something more. Kyotaro says he wouldn't think much of it unless someone told him directly. Then, Yamada playfully wipes chocolate from his face, creating a romantic moment before she dashes off. Reflecting on the day, Kyotaro gives Yamada a chocolate box, cheekily saying she's a boy today, echoing her earlier joke. But once he's home, he starts to regret his lame excuse and wonders about his true feelings. Kyotaro's overthinking his move like a chess player who's just made a risky play. Later that night, Kyotaro is surprised when Yamada shows up, walking her dog. They decide to take a stroll together, ending up buying drinks from a vending machine and settling on a park bench for a chat. Kyotaro can't help but notice Yamada seems off. They awkwardly ask each other if they've given or received chocolates from someone of the opposite gender. Both deny it, with Kyotaro mentioning it's best not to lead anyone on. That's when Yamada hands him a chocolate cupcake she made, saying she doesn't mind if he gets the wrong idea. Tears follow, as she admits things didn't go as planned, leading to another comforting hug before they head home. It's like they're dancing around their feelings, with the cupcake as the lead. Back in his room staring at the cupcake, Kyotaro pieces together that Yamada has feelings for him. At school the next day, the talk is all about what the boys will give for White Day. Adachi, still mistakenly thinking he has a shot with Moko, is brainstorming the perfect gift for her. 
On the way home, Kyotaro and Adachi run into Haria, the school's heartthrob. Adachi seeks gift advice, and Haria suggests lingerie of all things. Kyotaro internally face palms but keeps quiet. Just then, Yamada waved to Kyotaro from a window. He almost let slip his feelings for Yamada to Haruya but is quickly whisked away by Yamada, and they walk home together. Kyotaro wants to be more active, so he chooses to walk home with Yamada instead of riding his bike. While looking through her bag, Yamada finds a movie ticket someone gave her. She remembers that the movie is showing today. Waiting at the train station, Yamada snaps a photo of Kyotaro wearing her cozy cardigan. Searching the cardigan pockets, she discovers another movie ticket and offers it to Kyotaro. Kyotaro, understanding Yamada's hint, asks if they can watch the movie together. Yamada, with a big smile, agrees. Kyotaro is a bit nervous about someone recognizing them together, and, by chance, they run into his sister at a takoyaki stand. She teases Kyotaro about his after-school date and tells him to enjoy these moments. Yamada is impressed to learn Kyotaro's sister has been perfecting her takoyaki-making skills at home. Despite the heat, Yamada can't resist trying one, only to find it too hot. She notices Kyotaro watching his sister work and shares that he never seen someone he knows working, which Yamada then invites Kyotaro to her photo shoot, surprising him, but he's excited and agrees. Wanting to prevent Yamada from burning her mouth again, Kyotaro cools another takoyaki and feeds it to her, his heart racing from the gesture. After they finish eating, his sister insists on paying for their meal. They thank her and head off to enjoy the movie together. Yamada is super excited about a movie she's in and tells Kyotaro she's going to Hiroshima for the next part. Kyotaro notices Yamada talks really fast when she's excited about films. After watching the movie, Yamada says sorry to Kyotaro for thinking he might not be interested in it. But Kyotaro says he liked learning more about what Yamada loves. They have fun playing a word game as they walk home, ending their day nicely. On Sunday, Kyotaro wakes up his sister early to ask what she thinks about his outfit because he wants to look good for Yamada's photo shoot. He even brings snacks as a gift for Yamada. At the shoot, seeing Yamada and everyone working makes Kyotaro feel out of place and he starts to leave. But he remembers he wanted to understand more about Yamada's world. Yamada catches up to Kyotaro and shares she once thought about quitting her job because it was tough. Kyotaro's encouragement, though, helped her decide to keep going. Kyotaro realizes supporting Yamada's dreams is important because that's the Yamada he admires, so he takes her back to the shoot, reminding himself it's all about supporting her right now. At the shoot, Yamada's manager introduces himself to Kyotaro and even gives him a business card. Getting to know everyone there, Kyotaro sees they're nice people. The manager, knowing a lot about Kyotaro from Yamada, mistakenly thinks they're dating. On the train ride home, Kyotaro shows Yamada a photo he took of her working and tells her she looks pretty. It's almost time for graduation, and the teacher picks Kyotaro to give the goodbye speech. At first, Kyotaro doesn't want to because he thinks only the top students should do it, but his friends say he's really smart too. Yamada looks super excited about it so Kyotaro says yes and goes to practice his speech. But he's so scared that he can barely talk louder than a whisper. After trying to practice, Yamada takes him aside to help him speak up. He gets a lot better with her help. Right then, they overhear Haruya saying no to a girl who likes him because he likes Yamada. Kyotaro decides he's going to nail that speech, not just for Yamada but also to show Haruya. Kyotaro works super hard on his speech, even practicing in front of his family. He starts to wonder how he got so shy because he used to be okay with talking in front of people. But he keeps going, even making plans to go to a fancy hair place by himself for the first time, which makes his sister cry because she's so happy for him. On graduation day, everyone's buzzing about Kyotaro's new hairstyle, but it looks a bit off. Serena, with dreams of becoming a hairstylist, jumps in with some quick waxing action. Amidst the fix-up, Chihiro brings up the bittersweet thought of possibly being separated next year, casting a shadow over the mood. But Kyotaro reassures Yamada, saying they'll manage, and with her help, his hair is back to looking like his usual self. In a classic oh no moment, Kyotaro realizes he's left the speech at home and makes an SOS call to his sister. Yamada, wanting to boost his spirits, lends him her cherished doggy keychain as a lucky charm. Racing against time, Kyotaro's sister, accompanied by a co-worker, rushes to deliver the speech. But it's a tad too late, the ceremony's already begun. Walking onto the stage, with nerves all over, Kyotaro's inner Chad kicks in, reminding him of the trust he has in himself. The speech starts off strong, but when he forgets the last part of the script, he wings it, wrapping up with heartfelt, improvised words that leave an impression. 
After his speech, Kyotaro, overwhelmed by the ordeal, fades and wakes up in the infirmary, to Yamada and Haruya's praises. Haruya, seizing the moment, confesses his feelings for Yamada, but she gently lets him down, saying she already likes someone else. As they leave the infirmary, there's an unspoken bond between Kyotaro and Yamada, their faces flushed with more than just the aftermath of a speech well delivered. Kyotaro's family is all gathered around, watching his big farewell speech at school on the phone. His sister teases him, saying he'll need to get good at turning down all the fans he's going to have now that he's kind of a big deal. But back at school, things are super awkward between Kyotaro and Yamada, especially after she told Haruya she likes someone else, and it's Kyotaro. Chihiro then asks Yamada to join them for some karaoke fun with the basketball team. When Kyotaro finds out the boys are going too, he can't resist the urge to follow them and ends up eavesdropping. But his plan goes south when a senior spot him and drags him into the karaoke room. Totally embarrassed, Kyotaro makes a dash for the next room to hide. Soon, Yamada pops in, wondering why Kyotaro is there. He panics and ends up confessing he followed her because he didn't like her hanging out with the basketball guys. Yamada, a bit surprised, playfully pokes his back. The whole awkward but cute encounter is watched by their classmates. Now, Kyotaro has no choice but to join in the singing, wrapping up the day with a mix of embarrassment and fun. The next day takes an interesting turn when Hara invites Kyotaro and Yamada, with Kenta tagging along, for a white day outing. After their train ride, Hara suggests a cute hat for Yamada as a gift. Kyotaro agrees, but Yamada and Kenta get the wrong idea, thinking Kyotaro called Hara cute. Kenta's jealousy hits the roof and he keeps muttering threats under his breath. In a cafe, Kyotaro takes a moment to straighten out the misunderstanding with Kenta. The air is tense until Kenta comments on Hara's dieting habits, claiming she's perfect as is. This remark doesn't sit well with Yamada who throws Kyotaro a sharp glance. Kyotaro jumps in, suggesting Kenta support Hara's choices. Kenta sees the point and offers a heartfelt apology, presenting Hara with a white day gift, which Yamada helped pick out. This sparks a wave of jealousy in Kyotaro, who blurts out that Yamada belongs to him, a comment that leaves Yamada speechless. Afterward, Kyotaro and Kenta have a deep talk. Kyotaro confesses he feels like Yamada's out of his league, but Kenta counters, praising Kyotaro's recent transformations and insisting they're a great match. Kyotaro discovers Kenta and Hara aren't officially an item yet, they're taking things slow, which Kenta is content with. With Hara and Kenta heading their separate ways, Kyotaro and Yamada find themselves sharing crepes, alone. The day's chaos makes Kyotaro suggest calling it a day. On the train ride home, Yamada's curiosity is piqued by something in Kyotaro's backpack. Seizing the moment, Kyotaro decides to return Yamada's Valentine's gesture with a cupcake of his own, hiding a piece of jewelry inside. Overcome with embarrassment at the reveal, Kyotaro makes a dash for it, only for Yamada to stop him, asking for his help in putting on the jewelry. Gathering all his courage, Kyotaro finally compliments Yamada directly, triggering a wave of emotions in her as she tears up with happiness. Adachi has a big plan for White Day. He wants to give Moko cookies to show her how much he appreciated the chocolate she gave him on Valentine's Day. He thinks this sweet gesture will win her heart. Adachi is a bit shy, so he asks his friend Kyotaro to help out by placing the cookie box in Moko's shoe locker and then telling her the cookies are from him. However, in a funny mix-up, Adachi accidentally drops the cookie box without realizing it. Kyotaro picks up the box, but he puts it in the wrong locker. Yamada's locker, not Moiko's. Just as Kyotaro is trying to figure out what to do, Moiko and Yamada walk by. Kyotaro tries to explain the mix-up, but then Adachi and his mom come over. They start thanking Moiko for the chocolates Adachi received on Valentine's Day. Yamada then reads the letter inside and gets all flustered because she thinks the sweet message is for her. Meanwhile, Chihiro has her own plan. She thinks if she acts like she hates her friends and asks the teacher to separate them next year, the teacher might actually keep them together to solve their problems. But this plan totally backfires. The teacher agrees to Chihiro's request and now she's worried they really will be separated. After school, Yamada challenges Kyotaro to a one-on-one -on -one basketball game. The deal is, the loser has to do whatever the winner says. The problem is, Yamada is really bad at basketball. She keeps missing her shots. But in a twist, Yamada wins the game with a lucky layup after catching one of Kyotaro's missed shots. Yamada's request as the winner is simple but surprising to Kyotaro. She wants to call him by his first name from now on. This gets Kyotaro's imagination running wild. He starts thinking about all sorts of things, even having a funny conversation with his inner devil about it. Kyotaro's sister interrupts his daydreaming by bursting into his room. She asks if he wants to do anything special for his birthday. 
When Kyotaro mentions Yamada has work and he has cram school, his sister teases him because she didn't even bring up Yamada's name. It's clear Kyotaro has Yamada on his mind a lot. On his way home from cram school, Kitaro bumps into Yamada after her work. He's happy to walk home with her but notices she hasn't called him by his first name yet. Kyotaro wonders if she forgot their basketball match bet. Suddenly, feeling like they're being followed, Kyotaro's ready to jump into action to protect Yamada. But it turns out to be his dad, who's just come back with a birthday cake for Kyotaro. Yamada is surprised to learn it's Kyotaro's birthday and is thrilled when he invites her to celebrate with him. A plan she quickly accepts. Kitaro's sister, wanting to join in on the fun, wears an outfit matching Yamada's to celebrate together. They all enjoy a hot pot dinner and when they encourage Yamada to eat up, she claims to have a small appetite, which Kitaro silently laughs at because he knows that's not true. The birthday celebrations continue with Kitaro's sister giving him a bunny girl action figure as a present. Kitaro is super embarrassed to receive this kind of gift in front of Yamada. Then, it's time for the birthday cake and the happy birthday song. At the song's end, Yamada finally calls Kyotaro by his first name and whispers a happy birthday wish in his ear, causing Kyotaro to faint dramatically. Seeing it's getting late, Kyotaro's sister suggests Yamada should stay over, and surprisingly their parents are okay with it, which sends Kyotaro into a full-blown panic. Later, Kyotaro's sister tasks him with passing Yamada's clothes to her for after her bath, including a super awkward moment when he hands her a hair tie while she's still in the bath. Before bed, Kyotaro gives Yamada a drink and finds her reading a script for a movie part she's practicing. They share a heart-to-heart -heart moment, with Yamada acting out a scene from the movie, leading to Kyotaro resting his head on her chest for comfort. They stay up talking late into the night, and before Kyotaro heads back to his own room, he makes sure Yamada is tucked in and comfortable. After the sleepover birthday party, Kyotaro and Yamada are brushing their teeth together. Kyotaro is surprised by how close they've become. Then, Yamada has to go to Hiroshima to film a movie, and Kyotaro plans to spend his day with friends at the park. At the park, they talk about a famous person who got into a scandal. Kyotaro starts to worry when Moiko says it's okay for famous people to date. He thinks about Yamada staying at his house and worries it might cause problems for her reputation. Everyone are a bit sad but excited for Yamada because she might become very famous soon. Chihiro reminds them that Yamada will always be the same person to them, which makes everyone feel better. Later, Yamada tells Kyotaro about her day on a video call, but they have to hang up quickly when Yamada's mom comes in. The next day, Yamada is excited to work with a famous actor named Ken, and Kyotaro sends her a message to cheer her on. Kyotaro gets worried when he sees a picture on social media that Yamada took at his house. People start guessing things about her personal life. Kyotaro tries to tell a fan spreading rumors to stop, but the fan just blocks him. This makes Kyotaro even more worried about rumors affecting Yamada. Meanwhile, Yamada does really well in a scene for her movie, even earning praises from Ken. And she says it's because of the support from Kyotaro during the late night sleepover talk. This makes Kyotaro happy but still worried about the rumors. Kyotaro's sister wants to post a birthday photo with Yamada in it. Kyotaro quickly deletes the photo because he doesn't want to start more rumors. He realizes he used to be too interested in Yamada's life, just like the fan. After that, Yamada video calls Kyotaro to show him how pretty the peers in Hiroshima are. But suddenly, a mysterious figure appears behind her. And oops, her phone takes a dive into the water, cutting off their call. Kyotaro is super worried, imagining all sorts of things, especially when Yamada doesn't text him back all day. Feeling really anxious, Kyotaro decides to visit Yamada's house. He meets her dad in the lobby, who sees Kyotaro shivering from the cold and worry. Kindly, her dad invites Kyotaro inside for some warm, delicious tea. While they're having tea, Yamada's dad gets a call from her. She tells him to let Kyotaro know her phone fell into the water, which is why she couldn't reply to his texts. Yamada's dad passes the phone to Kyotaro, and Yamada quickly explains that her mom scared her, causing her to drop her phone. She's super sorry for making Kyotaro worry all day. After the call, Kyotaro and Yamada's parents chat, and both Kyotaro and Yamada share that they like each other a lot. Yamada's dad seems cool with it, and even shares his game friend code with Kyotaro, hoping to play games together in the future. Now that her film is done, Yamada heads to a ramen restaurant. Kyotaro notices the creepy fan from online saying he saw Yamada there, and rushes over, worried about her safety. At the restaurant, Yamada is hanging out with Nico, a model she really admires. Kyotaro remembers Nico from a photo shoot and asks to join them. Talking to Nico, Kyotaro figures out she's the overzealous fan from online. After Yamada steps outside, Kyotaro tells Nico he's the guy she blocked online, explaining he's a fan of Yamada too. Yamada tells Nico she admires her, and they agree to hang out more, discovering they're both fans of each other. Nico unblocks Kyotaro and gives him her main social media info, 
asking for school pics of Yamada. On the train ride home, Kitaro tells Yamada that famous people often get dragged into rumors, so they need to be careful about how close they appear in public. Yamada wishes she could grow up faster so they can be together without worrying about rumors. Starting their third year of middle school, Kyotaro is anxiously waiting to see if he and Yamada will be in the same class. He gets a text from Yamada saying she's already in class, ramping up his worries about them being separated. But when he opens the class door, he's relieved and thrilled to see Yamada there. They excitedly hold hands, drawing surprised looks from their classmates. Yamada quickly pretends she mistook Kyotaro for someone else and grabs her friend's hand instead. Serena, eager to surprise Yamada, finds that Yamada already knows thanks to the name lists posted. Chihiro, however, faces a moment of uncertainty, not finding her name on any class list. A quick visit to the teacher's office clears up the confusion, revealing that Chihiro is indeed in the same class as Yamada and the others. While Yamada, Kyotaro, and most of their friends are reunited in one class, Adachi finds himself in a different class. He catches up with Kyotaro during a break, expressing envy over Kyotaro being surrounded by pretty girls, including Hanzawa and Ando. Adachi makes Kyotaro promise to fill him in on all the class happenings. After class, in an empty classroom, Yamada gives Kyotaro a wallet chain as a gift. While she's helping him attach it, the girls walk in, prompting Yamada and Kyotaro to quickly hide. They overhear the girls asking Moiko about rumors of Kyotaro and Yamada dating, which Moiko denies to protect them. The girls then joke about throwing a flash mob if Kyotaro and Yamada ever become an official item, amusing Moiko, who knows it would embarrass them. When the coast is clear, an unfortunate movement causes Kyotaro's wallet chain to pull down his pants just as Moiko re-enters the room, leaving her in shock and vowing not to cover for them any longer. Walking home, the boys discuss their new class assignments. Kyotaro keeps quiet about his embarrassing moment. He also learns that Kenta and Hara have been separated into different classes this year with Kenta making every effort to visit Hara whenever possible. The next day, during the health check, Chihiro amusingly tries to use her key power to make herself taller, while Yamada attempts to lighten her weight for their measurements. When Yamada shares her results with Kyotaro, Ando, seeing their friendly exchange, can't help but ask if they're dating. Kyotaro cleverly dodges the question, explaining he's just trying to be more sociable in his new class this year. Yamada, being her friendly self, quickly hits it off with Ando, and they start calling each other by nicknames. Later, in the library, Kyotaro mentions he can now reach the higher bookshelf, which impresses Yamada. They decide to mark their growth on the bookshelf, and when Kyotaro writes Yamada's first name, she's both happy and a bit flustered by the gesture. Feeling like it might be the right time to confess his feelings, Kyotaro considers telling Yamada how he feels. However, their moment is interrupted when Hanzawa walks in. Realizing she might be disturbing something, she awkwardly leaves, bumping into a chair and dropping her book on the way out. When the class draws seats for the year, Kyotaro ends up at the back, and Hanzawa switches seats so Yamada can sit next to him. To maintain some mystery and keep their relationship under wraps, Kyotaro tries to act cool and distant from Yamada in class. Afterward, Kyotaro finds a note Yamada wrote to Hanzawa, thanking her for switching seats. The note clarifies that she and Kyotaro aren't officially a couple yet. It describes, Yamada cherishes the closeness they've developed over time. Embarrassed but touched by the note, Kyotaro drops his mysterious act and goes back to being friendly with Yamada. In a later library visit, Hanzawa curiously asks Yamada about what being in love feels like. The conversation gets awkward when Kyotaro walks in, prompting Hanzawa to make a quick exit. The sports day is coming up, and the teacher is super excited. She really wants to win this time because her team didn't win last year. Kyotaro isn't excited about sports day. A classmate who looks kind of scary asks Kyotaro to be knights in their cavalry battle team. The classmate thinks Kyotaro is perfect because he looks small. But Yamada stands up for him and says he's not small at all. Kyotaro ends up saying no to being in the game. Adachi decides to join cavalry battle in his class. He notices Kyotaro looks taller than last year. This reminds Adachi that last year's sports day when Kyotaro got hurt because he saved Yamada from falling during centipede race. Adachi says sorry for telling people he pushed Yamada, but Kyotaro has already forgotten about it. This makes Kyotaro think about the first time he really talked to Yamada and how he used to be so negative. Yamada remembers that day too and says sorry to Kyotaro for the scar he got because of saving her. Adachi sees them talking and challenges Kyotaro to join the cavalry battle to compete against each other in front of Yamada. Kyotaro says yes out of respect. So he starts practicing by running in the park. While taking a break, Kyotaro sees Yamada with her dog right behind of him. She asks if he's practicing for sports day, which Kyotaro jokes he's just getting ready for a zombie attack. 
Yamada plays along and they race each other. After getting tired, Yamada invites him to her house to rest, which is her plan all along. At her house, Yamada shows Kyotaro a workout tool for abs, which leads to a funny and awkward moment when he tries to keep her dog away. Yamada wonders why Kyotaro said yes to Adachi's challenge. Kyotaro says it's because Adachi is his friend. Then Yamada asks if he likes sweet or salty eggs, but Kyotaro, lifting weights, says he likes them sweet. He doesn't tell her the real reason he accepted the challenge is because he knows Adachi likes Yamada, and he doesn't want to lose to him. Yamada hears Kyotaro shouting passionately and thinks he's really excited about sweet eggs, so she promises to make him some delicious sweet eggs for sports day. When sports day arrives, students start drawing on each other's faces. Yamada draws on Kyotaro's face and tells him to make sure his headband stays on. Adachi gives an inspiring speech to the students right before the events start, making Kyotaro even more determined not to lose. The first event is a scavenger hunt. Ando gets a bit sneaky and writes down that she needs to find a couple, pointing at Yamada and Kyotaro. But in a funny twist, it's Yamada's parents who end up crossing the finish line, not Kyotaro and Yamada. Ando gets a scolding from the teacher who's really into winning the game. Next, it's Yamada's turn to compete, and she ends up in a funny pose for the event. Kyotaro quickly covers Adachi's eyes, remembering how he's always trying to distant Adachi from Yamada. Suddenly, it starts to rain, and the teachers think about cancelling the cavalry battle. But Kyotaro and Adachi insist on having the battle, promising it'll be quick. During the battle, Adachi suddenly shouts that he likes Yamada and respects Kyotaro. Kyotaro gets frustrated and tells Adachi he doesn't really know Yamada or him, and that his reasons for liking Yamada are shallow. Adachi admits he knows this, which is why he plans to lose on purpose, but Kyotaro tells him to fight seriously anyway. In an intense moment, Adachi manages to take Kyotaro's headband, winning the battle. Afterwards, they both end up in the infirmary where Yamada comes rushing in. She tells Kyotaro that learning to deal with disappointment is a big part of moving on. She then gives him the rice balls and eggs, she promised, which Kyotaro finds delicious. He even shares one with Yamada. Before she leaves, Yamada tells Kyotaro that he looked cool today, leaving him with a feeling of pride and a bit of embarrassment. Summer's here, and Kyotaro's all surprised when he sees Yamada in her cute summer school outfit. She even asks him to feel her new skirt, which makes them both blush. In class, Kyotaro's not too excited about Summer, but then his inner Chad tells him he has Yamada now, and that should make him happy. He then hears the girls chatting about Yamada's new audition, which makes him curious. Then, the teacher comes in all pumped up, telling everyone it's time to pick their groups for the school trip. Kenta asks if they can ask Yamada to join their group. Kyotaro thinks it's a great idea and decides to ask her himself, but it turns out Kenta was talking about a different Yamada, a boy in their class, which makes for a pretty funny mix-up. Yamada looks worried when she sees the number 12 on the board, and Kyotaro can't help but notice she's acting strange. He starts daydreaming about them on the school trip, hiding from the rain together and almost kissing, just like in the love manga they both read. Suddenly, Yamada video calls Kyotaro. She's reading the same manga, and she wants to talk about the school trip. But then she turns off her camera and says she'll be there, sounding sad and even cries a little, saying it's just a cold. On the train to their school trip, Kitaro ends up sitting next to Hanzawa. He swaps seats with her because she loves looking outside. Hanzawa warns him to be careful during the trip because Ando has plans for a flash mob to celebrate couples. Kyotaro tells her he and Yamada aren't officially a couple yet. Kyotaro tries to keep some distance from Yamada, but when they're feeding deer in Nara Park, Yamada gets scared by the deer coming toward her and accidentally throws a biscuit into Kyotaro's bag. As she's trying to get it out, Hanzawa quickly covers Ando's eyes to stop her from seeing them together and thinking it's time for the celebration. It's a super funny moment for everyone. Kyotaro dashes off and spots Chihiro all by herself, keeping an eye on Yamada from a distance. Chihiro mentions she's noticed something off about Yamada too, like she's just pretending to be all cheerful. She hints that Yamada made her own choice about something, but doesn't explain what. This chat leaves Kyotaro a bit puzzled, wondering what Chihiro meant. Despite this, Kyotaro tries not to worry, trusting Yamada will sort things out like she always does. Later on, when everyone's taking baths, Adachi comes up with a silly challenge for the boys to show of their PP. Meanwhile, over at the girls' bath, the girls feel a bit awkward about being around Yamada for free, given her impressive opai. After the bath, Kyotaro ends up catching Yamada's phone before it hits the ground. Just as Ando seems ready to start the flash mob celebration, Adachi swoops in, saving them from what would have been a super awkward moment. That night, Kyotaro struggles to fall asleep. Suddenly, Kenta wakes up, mumbling something about Hara's room being right below them, then drifts back to sleep. 
Kyotaro inner chat appears and starts thinking about that kiss scene from the manga again, guessing Yamada might be thinking about it too. His guess turns out to be right when he sees Yamada reenacting the scene, looking really emotional. It clicks for Kyotaro then. Yamada gave up her audition for the love manga, which meant a lot to her, just to be with him on the school trip. This realization hits him hard and he can't help but feel moved. Feeling a rush of emotions, Kitaro goes looking for Yamada, feeling foolish for being caught up in thoughts about the manga scene, especially knowing how much effort Yamada put into her acting. When Yamada spots Kitaro hiding by the stairs, they almost get caught by a teacher who mistakes Kitaro for Chihiro. Quick thinking Yamada hides Kitaro under her futon to keep him out of sight from the other girls in the room. Trapped under Yamada's futon in the girls' room, Kyotaro is super nervous, hoping none of the girls find him. The girls chat about the type of guys they like, and Yamada mentions she likes guys who are cat-like, maybe hinting at Kyotaro. Then, Yamada flips the question, asking the girls if they've ever been asked out. Moiko says she thinks that's kinda childish, and believes in letting relationships happen naturally. But Yamada chimes in, saying she'd actually like to be asked out, maybe hoping Kyotaro would hear her. As it is getting late, Chihiro turns off the lights, saying it's bedtime before they get in trouble. Kyotaro plans to sneak out once the girls fall asleep. But it's super hard to even think about leaving with Yamada so close next to him under the futon. Suddenly, Yamada moves closer, asking Kyotaro if he thinks she's grown up and even tries to kiss him. Kyotaro stops her, saying he needs to talk to her tomorrow, which makes Yamada jump, almost giving Kyotaro away. Just as Kyotaro thinks he's about to be discovered, Kenta surprisingly shows up outside the window, scaring the girls away. Kyotaro takes this chance to dash out, reminding Yamada they need to talk the next day. The following day, at the shrine, Ando tells Yamada about the legend that if a couple walks through the shrine holding hands, they're destined to be together forever. Meanwhile, Kyotaro is trying to figure out how to talk to Yamada about her audition. When he finally gets some alone time with Yamada, she asks if he's enjoying the school trip. Kyotaro says yes, but he can see that Yamada is actually feeling a bit sad, even though she's trying to hide it. Yamada suddenly starts crying, apologizing to Kyotaro because she's been so focused on her audition that she hasn't been able to fully enjoy the school trip with him. But Kyotaro comforts her, telling her that he's stronger than she thinks. He shares how he used to be a loner without any friends until he met Yamada, who brought color into his world. He assures her that she doesn't need to sacrifice her audition for him, and then he bravely says, I Yamada love you to Yamada, creating a really touching moment between them. Just then, Ando spots them and starts chasing, planning to launch the flash mob celebration. But Kyotaro quickly grabs Yamada's hand and they run away, with Kenta and Hara accidentally getting caught up in the celebration instead, saving Kyotaro and Yamada from the spotlight. Kyotaro urges Yamada to catch the train so she won't miss her audition, even giving her the snacks he prepared for her. As Yamada tries to say something back, Chihiro interrupts them, handing Yamada the manga she needs for her audition and wishing her luck. Afterward, Kyotaro and Chihiro head back, finding that Ando and the others are celebrating Kenta and Hara as a couple, which is super awkward for Hara. Shopping for souvenirs, Kyotaro ends up having a good time with the boys. On the train ride back, Yamada texts him to meet at their usual spot. Kyotaro can't wait to see her again and rushes to the school library where Yamada is waiting with lots of snacks. She tells him she did her best at the audition, and is waiting for a callback. Facing Kyotaro, she thanks him for helping her find herself, saying he is her everything, and finally says, I love you back to him. She then asks him to be her boyfriend, making their relationship official. Yamada even gives Kyotaro a kiss on the cheek, and they're both overjoyed to have fallen in love with each other.